Hey guys, in this video I am going to go over two more creature designs I came up with using the list randomizer. For the first design, the prompts were insect, shell, slender, four-legged and bloodthirsty. Now, I was already starting out pretty bad with a design that somewhat looked like Goofy. And once I saw it, I was not able to unsee it and had to scrap it. Now, the second design and the designs after this all had a pretty spider-like aesthetic. So I was like, why not draw a spider mutant? Because at the time, I did think that spiders were insects, which I learned when I was already halfway finished, that spiders are in fact not insects, but arachnids. Nonetheless, at this point, I was already too invested into the creature, so I just stuck with it and thought of it just as a really ugly bug. So with a lot of goodwill, I've gotten the insect prompt checked off for the shell. I was drawing a, a big shell, like a pretty turtle-like aesthetic with the head poking out and the arms or the legs rather poking out. Four-legged, yes, basically does have four legs. Um, I do think that it is anatomically possible. I mean, there are animals with fewer legs. For the bloodthirsty part of things, I was going to draw a lot of saliva dripping down the spider's mouth. Slender, I already had a pretty bad feeling about starting out with the spider because long story short, I just didn't feel like Slender would fit the equation. So I basically threw that out of the window. Now with a lot of fantasy, you could imagine that the spider inside the shell is very slim. But if you, if you take a serious look at the creature, it's everything but slim. So I've gotten four out of five prompts with this one, which is still a pretty good effort. Now that's pretty much it for the first design and we are moving on to the second design. For the second design, I have gotten the prompts scarred, greedy, small bones and disemboweled. Now you might have noticed that some prompts like scarred or hunchback or bulky, I've already gotten several times and it's starting to get a bit repetitive. So feel free to write a couple of prompts or even entire prompt lists in the comments, which I can then add to my prompt list. To make for a little bit more interesting and less repetitive designs. Now with this one I started out with a goblin because uh, small and greedy I always think of goblins but it was not too original of an idea so I scrapped this design and moved on to something like a skeleton knight which I didn't like too much either and then started scribbling around but to be completely honest from time to time I do get some interesting results, but this time around I really didn't. Also, throughout the last couple designs I did, I found that I really do like to paint the creatures, to paint some of the values instead of cross hatching or even do a cross hatching and painting like combination. But I really found that I do like painting because it makes it a little bit more, well, in a sense, uh, painting does make it uh, come a little bit more alive than just cross-hatching. Now, after the scribbling around, I came up with some gnome-looking creature. This gnome is carrying a, a crystal ball or an orb. I do draw a lot of crystal bolts and orbs, as you might have noticed, and they often do correlate to magic, which is no different with this design, because inside this crystal bowl, there are actually 
the creature's intestines, which is kind of a Davy Jones-esque approach to things. So this gnome, let's call him a gnome, did remove his intestines and put them inside this magic crystal bowl to keep him safe. And usually he would hide this crystal bowl somewhere. He's just showing it off for this very painting. And this is why he's so protective of it. He's holding it in the center of his body. Funnily enough, where his intestines would uh, originally be. And he's carrying it with both hands, so he's very protective of it. And he does have a little bit of a pissed off look, which basically communicates to not come anywhere close to this crystal ball with his intestines swimming around. Now what he usually would do, as I already mentioned, hide it somewhere in a safe place and whenever something happens to him, he's not too affected by it since all his vulnerable organs are somewhere safe and the rest he will figure it out as he goes, but all his vulnerable parts are stored away in a safe place. So the creature is pretty greedy, especially when it comes to his intestines, which is understandable, disemboweled as well, which probably left a scar, which you currently can't see because his belly is covered up by his beard. With bones, I couldn't really think of anything that made sense, so I basically left out this prompt. I still could work small, greedy, disemboweled and with a lot of good faith even scarred. So that's about it for the gnome without intestines. And that's also pretty much all for the video. Thanks for watching and bye.